Welcome to Behind the Bastards, the only podcast where the host, Robert Evans, could easily, and I mean easily, defeat LeBron James at basketball. Come on. Not a problem. Not even a challenge. Everyone knows it. Everybody agrees. Let's just move on having made the point. This yeah, is, of I course. Mean, Robert, I've seen your dunk. I've seen your mm-hmm. dunk reels on TikTok. You're very Thank good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, unparalleled, some would say. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I'm so Jamie. I'm sad. I'm so speaking sad. Speaking is Jamie Loftus. How how are you, yeah. Jamie, Jamie Loftus? I'm so I'm so uh, I'm I'm all over the place, but I'm good. I'm all right. All things considered, I brought my cat on an on a cross country flight yesterday. So I'm, I'm oh, that's cute. always fun. How did fun. he do? Was he good? What, what was the vibe? Did he have drugs? He was good. We were. We were sitting like I was uh, in the two rows. I was the only person that wasn't on the way to celebrate someone's 30th birthday. Uh, uh, but they really took to the cat. They were we, we were all an emotional support unit. They were all watching Naruto on iPads. Right? I was listening to an Amityville horror audio book and just reaching down and petting my cat for six hours. It was a it was a real treat. How are yeah. you, Robert? I'm good, um, by which I mean terrible, by which I mean normal. Um, <laughs> okay, so nothing's changed since we last spoke. That's yeah, comforting. I just flew too. I was in Texas for my brother's wedding, and so I was. I got to be as I was when I left Texas. There, the day a, a new shitty law came into being. Um, cause wow. I, I, okay, you need to stop going back. You're a jinx. Yeah, I mean, when I moved oh, to yeah. LA, I had just like immediate. It was immediately after I attended the protests uh, for Wendy Davis at the Capitol over the uh, over abortion. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's just me in Texas, baby. Bad. Combo. Wait, Robert, what is your what is um what is your vibe at a wedding? I can't picture uh, you at a wedding, so I need I to know. Have trouble picturing me too at a wedding, Jamie. It was but a I was Catholic there. Wedding too. Um, it was <laughs> it very was a Catholic, Catholic wedding. Um, Did you get to ex- eat the tiny bread? No, no, no. I don't. I don't take. I communion. love the tiny um, bread. It tastes so good. I th- but there I was think a whole there was mass. a tux involved too. <laughs> I had to wear a tux. Uh, I have. Where's burnt the, pics? the pictures? Uh, I felt bad about killing the photographer, Send but me. I just couldn't let there be a chance of those photos getting out. So. Send me a pic of you I in the I did what tux. I had to do. They've Are you smiling perched. with teeth in the pics? No. no. <laughs> but I, I did were, get extremely were... drunk at the, it was, thankfully, it was a, uh, um, it was a Catholic wedding, but it was also a Mexican wedding. So the food was incredible. Um, oh, nice. And I was able to get very drunk afterwards. So that Dope. was nice. I can't believe you smiled with teeth in mm-hmm. your tuxedo. Also, my brother's happy. Picks. I guess that's important, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah who gives mm-hmm. a shit? I don't know your brother. Allegedly. No, whatever. Allegedly. Yeah. Whatever. Jamie. What? How do you feel about the death of all hope? <laughs> I feel I feel I feel very numb to it. Yeah, that's a good way to feel about the death of all hope. Jamie, today yeah. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> and it's a story okay. about the end of the world. Now, this story doesn't okay. involve a nuclear holocaust or global war. The culprit for our incipient apocalypse is the modern information ecosystem, which has doomed us all and cannot be reformed. Now, oh, okay. to make it clear why, I'm going to tell you a story about ivermectin. Woo-hoo. I'm going to guess you've heard a lot about ivermectin in the last couple of days, haven't you? Yeah, sure have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Horse paste. Um, or- that tends to be <laughs> how people talk right. about it in social media. These idiots are taking horse paste, um, mm-hmm. which is, it's one of those things where people who love horse paste will be like, we're not taking horse paste. It's, there's a bunch of different formulations. There's even human versions. And that's true. Right. They're like, horse paste is the meanest possible. I've, se- I've seen versions mm-hmm. of that. Like, saying it's horse paste is uh, a little bit inaccurate. It's You're actually, deriding And us. then they say something else yeah. scary. I'm actually taking uh, yeah. sheep dip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but a lot of people are taking the human version of ivermectin, too, particularly like when you talk about Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan isn't going to a feed store and getting apple flavored horse paste. He's getting ivermectin prescribed him by a doctor because he's rich. Um, and ivermectin mm-hmm. is very much kind of a miracle medicine, just not in the purpose it's being used for. Um, it was discovered in 1975 and went on sale widely in the early 1980s. And it is still today one of the most potent antiparasitic medications in existence. It is effective in mm. livestock and also in humans. It is credited with curing a once devastating illness called river blindness, which I feel like the name 
describes uh, more or less the problem. Um, I don't agree. <laughs> what is parasites river from blindness? unclean water make you blind? And oh, ivermectin okay. d- stops that. Okay, which is okay. rad. Good it's good. It's very. It's very good stuff. The scientists who discovered yeah. it won a Nobel Prize, um, and mm-hmm. in 2015, it was even found that the antiparasitic drug is also effective at disrupting the transmission of malaria. Um, which is great. And when taken as directed, ivermectin is extremely safe with minimal side effects. And it is cheap enough to produce that you can find it all over the world. Or you could anyway before about like six month, six or so months ago. Ivermectin has developed, I think, a really toxic fan base. Yeah. And more it's the Rick and Morty of that. anti-parasitic drugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Um, and like Rick and Morty, it will stop herds of horses from shitting worms out it acts <laughs> yeah people they they have horses watching early seasons of mm-hmm. rick and morty all the just time up just up to, to see what three, will happen though. to their bodies mm-hmm. you give wow, a horse season okay. four it'll keep shitting worms so in september of 2020 australian researchers found that huge doses of ivermectin when administered in a laboratory setting might stop or could stop replication of COVID in cell cultures in less than 48 hours. This was okay. potentially a big deal for obvious reasons, but also these are cell cultures, right? This is not in the human body. These are in, in, in a very controlled laboratory setting. So this is a very useful piece of data. And obviously follow-up studies were immediately commissioned around the world to see if maybe this might be something that could help with COVID. Now, pre-vaccine, doctors were looking at a wide variety of medications and treatment options uh, that might act as stopgaps until there was a vaccine. One group of physicians who were doing this was the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance, or FLCCC. Um, This group had been formed by a number of critical care specialists with different medical backgrounds who wanted to try and hash together new ideas for treating the virus. Their first stab at this was to use corticosteroids to reduce mortality in severe COVID cases. Now, the man most behind this particular idea was a guy named Dr. Umberto Maduri. Uh, He's known as the guru of corticosteroids in lung disease. Conventional wisdom was a Wow, what an amazing, I hope there's a t-shirt for that. You hope there's a t, yeah. He should get- they announce him like he's a WWE wrestler when he comes out at medical conferences. I mean, fuck it. I want him to get a Two Chains album. Like, why not? I want to hook up with him. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this guy has this idea that like, hey, maybe corticosteroids might be useful in this situation. And that was very controversial at the time. Conventional wisdom um, was that steroids like that do more harm than good when treating a virus, like when treating a coronavirus. But Dr. Okay. Maduri and his colleagues were pretty sure that their solution would help. And they distributed a new hospital protocol called Math Plus for patients hospitalized with severe COVID. Hospitals began trying it out because, again, this is early in the virus. There's not... It's kind of like throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, and there's evidence okay. that this seriously slowed down mortality. It seems to have worked. Uh, hospital administrators noticed rapid slowdowns in mortality when they adopted this, specifically for people who were very sick. Um, well, so that's this what was, happens when you hire the guru. That's great. Yeah, so you, they, you bring in the guru. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was, of course, you know, they, they kind of started adopting this before there was a huge body of science. But a body of science was built a- as they started adopting this. And a large UK patient study in June of 2020 showed that steroid treatment uh, that the FLCCC suggested really worked. The Math Plus protocol was greenlit in hospitals around the United States. Praise flowed in for the FLCCC, who at this point looked like hardworking doctors doing their damnedest to find creative ways to save lives in an incredibly challenging situation. Situation. Wait, were they not? Well, this is not an easy answer that. to that question, Jamie. Okay. Because um, they definitely did a good thing there and saved a lot of lives with that. They've also gone on to do some sketchy things. And I, I don't have an easy summary for you of like the FLCCC is like they're horrible grifters or they're you know, decent medical, you know, people who got something wrong or their, their truth. Like, I don't, I don't have an easy answer for you for what these people are, but things take a turn at this point. So one of the doctors, one of the co-founders of the FLCCC was a guy named Dr. Pierre Corey. Now, Dr. Corey was not the brains behind Dr. Maduri's corticosteroid plan, but he did help found the FLCCC. He was very interested in the early 
in the early data that started coming out about ivermectin. In October of 2020, he and other FLCCC doctors noted that there had been several small successful trials using ivermectin as a preventative measure. These studies were not large or particularly high quality. We'll talk a little bit about them later. But in those pre-vaccine okay. days, a case could be made that they were not being irresponsible by adding ivermectin to their Math Plus protocol alongside a new preventative protocol called iMask Plus. There's not vaccines yet. The pandemic October is kind of at the fucking worst it's been. Um, right. And, you know, you could also say like, well, they kind of took a little bit of a stab on corticosteroids and that wound up saving lives. Might as well give it a shot with, especially since ivermectin, when taken in quantities for humans as prescribed by a doctor, fairly minimal risks, right? Um, I've never known anyone who's had river blindness. So, yes. Exactly. Exactly. You don't. And I spray you with a lot of contaminated river water, Jamie. You do. You've been doing a lot of experiments, but I, mm-hmm. I do believe when you say it's for the greater good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of something. I trust yeah, you. Sure. Um, so these guys are kind of operating off of the, the goodwill of having been semi-successful before to experiment with yeah. ivermectin. And they're, okay. they're also operating. You do have to acknowledge the situation when you're dealing with a pandemic of this severity. You can't necessarily wait like you have to make, you have to kind right. of triage when you wait to try something. And I can see in the case of ivermectin being like, look, when you, when taken, when, when giving people like normal human doses of ivermectin, very minimal risk of side effects. If it might help, it's worth trying, you know, you, you can, you right. can make that case. And that's the case these people were making. And at this point, they're not being bastards that I can tell. Um, okay. And they but were I have not. To imagine they're making a shitload of money. Also, would that be incorrect? I don't. I don't have that information, Jamie. Some of this. So okay. one of the troubles with this. This is going to be a little bit of a mess here because a lot of this is still breaking. And in fact, one of the studies that I was yeah. talking about earlier, an article just dropped today, kind of talking about it. So. I, I think that we will learn more about the FLCCC in time as a result of some of the things okay. we'll talk about. I don't know the extent to which people are making a profit off of it. I don't know enough to allege any that kind of fiscal wrongdoing. But there's something weird here at some point. Well, that's what we'll you get for being it. on the cutting edge as usual, Robert Evans. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Yeah. I am on the cutting edge like I am in the cutting edge of basketball strategies. You're on the um, cutting edge of weddings, on the mm-hmm. cutting edge mm-hmm. of COVID analysis, on the cutting edge of uh, smiling with your teeth in pictures. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I invented the four oh, pointer gosh. recently. No one had ever done that in basketball. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's Don't right. Make me fire you again. Yeah. Robert. Well, so at this point, it's also important to note that the FLCCC. They're saying we're adding this might we're we're recommending this in certain situations for people who are sick and as a potential prophylactic to prevent COVID. They were not billing ivermectin as a replacement or an alternative to the vaccine. And in fact, their early advocacy of ivermectin discussed it purely as a stopgap. Vaccines are not available at this point. There's some evidence that this might help stem the tide of infections, and we are at capacity in hospitals. So this might reduce infections. It might improve outcomes. We are going to recommend people take it until there's a vaccine, right? And I'm going to quote from Yahoo News here to talk about some people who did use it in that situation. Iconic, yeah. In a February local news segment, a Midland, Texas woman describes how she learned about ivermectin back in October from the Internet, and she and her family had been taking it in animal form ever since. Though she wasn't taking the tablets for humans, as the FLCCC recommends, in a way she was taking it as intended, as a bridge to the vaccine. I just got my first vaccine shot a few days ago, so no more horse paste, she told the reporter. So that is, I I do want to acknowledge here, that's not... Being unreasonable, like, right, maybe I would recommend get the human version if you can, but whatever, people, I, I know a lot of poor people in the country, sometimes you take veterinary medicine because it's what you can afford. Sure. Um, I, lo- and- I mean, the, the turn of phrase, so no more ho- horse paste alone. But yeah. I'm not going to say this is the most responsible decision a person could have made, but she got her vaccine, right? Right. And she, right. there was, I, I want you to. I want you to type FLCCC into Google and pull up their web page and take a look at it. Because when she says she found it on the Internet and because this okay. person took the vaccine, I, I, that can mean a lot of things. It can mean somebody is like seeing someone on Reddit talk about taking random medication or like on Facebook. 
But if you look right. at the FLCCC page, this, is this doesn't look like critical care. Is that uh, what yeah, we're talking yeah, yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. It's All a right. very reputable Not looking website. These are real ass doctors with real Jamie, does backgrounds. Finger Lakes Community College pop up for you 20 times and then it gets to the Finger COVID Lakes. thing? <laughs> I oh, this I had to have been that. an SEO disaster for the Finger, Finger Lakes Community College. Uh, oh, sorry, no. <laughs> I forgot I had a picture of I forgot I had a picture of Joe Rogan in a tab, and I just like it yeah. was like a jump scare. Um, okay, you- COVID nineteen criticalcare dot com. This does look like how I picture a yeah. medical website to look like. Okay, yeah, and you can you can see how a concerned parent in the middle of a horrible fucking plague could come to this mm-hmm. and be like, okay, well, this seems like a reasonable thing to do for my family until I can get the vaccine. Like avoid censorship, connect to FLCCC Alliance here. Yeah, is there's the definitely, the definitely. And that I think is, is newer. Like you can see some okay. kind of griftier things getting in here. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But you can also see how a perfectly reasonable person just trying to like do what's best for their family could be like, okay, well I'll give it a shot. Right. And that's and where it's we moving are. moving fast, too. Like, it's, they're, everything's they're moving so fucking very fast. quickly. Right. And in February, you know, you, you, uh, October to like January, uh, October 2020 to January 2021, people, I, I can see people just being like, okay, well, this seems like it might help. I can't get a vaccine. So far, so good, right? So far, the FLCCC, I can't, I'm sure, I'm sure th- there are things doctors could, could, quibbler complain about here there's definitely a debate to be I mean, had it's about certainly this sort a of desperate stuff, but like, measure but yeah there's no perfect choices you can make in a fucking pandemic either um that said while they haven't really gone off they haven't broke bad yet there were early signs that something was awry in december of 2020 dr pierre Corey testified to a senate panel about ivermectin which he called a wonder drug now Mm. When you hear the term wonder drug and they are not that talking about sounds... Dilaudid, the only wonder drug, which I call a wonder drug because it's wonderful. Oh, what is God. that? Uh, you know, I don't Jamie, know what a drug is, Robert. Dilaudid, what is Dil- that? Dilaudid is the Toyota Tacoma of opiates. It's, it's reliable, it's hardworking, it's comfortable. Oh, my God, it's so good. Like, I used to drive a Corolla. Oxy What's is a Corolla? Ford Fiesta. Um, oh, the okay. Cor- uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, fuck Oxy. Um, Dilaudid, baby. It's all about Dilaudid. Okay, uh, that's good information for when I begin mm-hmm. taking opiates. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody needs good information, and that information is try Dilaudid. Sponsors so of the podcast, it- by the way. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no. Yeah, he called it a law, a wonder drug to the Senate, which so got, is not in in court. He called it a wonder drug. Okay, that doesn't yeah, sound good. That doesn't sound good. That's not very, res- especially since there is data in December of 2020 that suggests this might be a useful. And, it, and it's perfectly, it would have been perfectly reasonable if he said, "Hey, we've got some data. This might help. Here's the situations in which the data suggests it might help. This is my recommendations." That might be right. how a responsible doctor would say it. You don't call it a wonder like drug. Doctor Oz rhetoric. Exactly. With the Supreme exactly. Court. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the Senate, and so he, the, number or one, he sh- this yeah. Senate panel was a Homeland Security Senate panel. So I don't know why okay. the fuck they're talking about that. Why are they? None of you people <laughs> like you're not even good at Homeland Security. Why are you talking about fucking <laughs> COVID nineteen? What are they doing? Um, just killing the, time? That's so yeah. bizarre. Fuck it, let's get a doctor up here. Now, the panel was chaired by Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. Because oh, of the FLC. That's a red yeah, flag. That's a real red flag right there. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Now, the problem is that because of the FLCCC's reputation with corticosteroids, Dr. Pierre Corey isn't, doesn't seem when he's coming up in front, he's not just some Yahoo. He is a real doctor working with an organization that took a very bold stab early in the pandemic and was very right about it. Like, and, Which and is, then immediately jokerified themselves. And then they went joker. Yeah, exactly. But like you yeah. can see why this is so dangerous, right? Um, right. And yeah. I also understand, I mean, with Ron Johnson, there's no excuse for anything he does. But I, I, hmm. I understand from like a regular, like a person consuming this media with not a lot of information, mm-hmm. why it might have seemed like not the worst, most dangerous thing in the world to do. So at this point, 
there's some shady stuff going on. That Senate testimony is questionable, right? Um, but there's also not really anything to suggest at the end of 2020 that ivermectin is about to become a public health problem. And in fact, while the U.S. started ramping up and distributing vaccines at the tail end of 2020 and early 2021, huge chunks of Latin America started adopting ivermectin as a standard treatment protocol. And the reasoning for this is as bleak as it is understandable. Latin America has some of the worst COVID death rates on the planet. Widespread poverty meant that while the vaccine was starting to get rolled out in the United States, it was not going to be anywhere in the near future for millions, tens of millions of people in Latin America. So while the wealthy countries hoarded vaccines for their own people, doctors in South and Central America looked at the early evidence on ivermectin and said, this is the best we can fucking do and we can afford it, you know? Yeah. Which is that's very so, sad. That's extremely bleak. Yeah, yeah it's real fucking bleak. Um, yeah. <laughs> Peru included the drug in its basic treatment guidelines, and one health minister in the country told Nature magazine that clinical trials investigating the drug's efficacy uh, had trouble recruiting control group participants because there were so many people already on the drug. Basically, they recommended people take this, and then they had trouble studying it because they couldn't find people who weren't taking it. Um, Wow. Okay. So it just – and was this like a very fast – process yeah. like it went yeah. zero okay and it's it's fast in part because you know unlike uh, when hydroxychloroquine which we'll talk about a bit later kind of went viral there's not a lot of that shit right it's not just like an otc thing like people had to get it prescribed right. you don't just walk into a cvs and you can walk into stores down the corner and pick up ivermectin because especially in like rural latin america any rural place there's a shitload of animal feed stores it's all over the place so it's anybody just like an can over-the-counter get it. veterinary drug yeah yeah, it's over-the-counter okay. veterinary drug. It's not super – you do have to get it prescribed for a person, but I think most of these people are taking the veterinary version. But even the person version, it's extreme – especially since a lot of Latin America, a lot of – huge an amount of parasites. So a lot of people are taking this anyway. It's available is, is the point. It's available and it's cheap. So it's mm-hmm. – once these people hear this might protect your family from COVID, they actually have the ability to get this stuff immediately. Right. Um, in uh-huh. Bolivia, healthcare workers pretty much instantly distributed 350,000 doses. Ivermectin also grew popular in South America for the same reasons, poverty and desperation. Um, so from the website Pharmaceutical Technology, quote, The pro-Ivermectin campaign has taken a particularly strong hold in South Africa, where coronavirus infection rates are among the worst in the continent, and the vaccine program has yet to cover all the country's most vulnerable. Some doctors have been prescribing the worm drug to COVID-19 patients, claiming anecdotally that it alleviates virus symptoms, despite the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority warning against its use. Ivermectin is also thriving on the country's black market, where one tablet can sell for as much as 25 pounds, and sales of veterinary forms of the drug have skyrocketed. Grassroots collectives such as the Ivermectin Interest Group, formed of South African health practitioners, public health experts, and medical scientists, have campaigned for approval of the drug, while civil rights group Afroform earlier this year filed a court case against SAFRA, which is the the South African uh, uh, Health Products Regulating Authority, to have the treatment approved for COVID-19 patients. After initially allowing controlled, compassionate use of the drug in an attempt to curb illegal sales, the health agency this month received a high court order to permit the off-label prescription of ivermectin by doctors. Huh, okay. Ivermectin also took off in the Philippines, where viral social media posts sent the product flying off the shelves of veterinary suppliers. One doctor was found to have printed 8,000 ivermectin pills using his own recipe. The Philippines FDA, yeah, the Philippines FDA attempted to rein this in and issued warnings that were not heeded. But they also approved two limited studies on the use of ivermectin in hospitals, admitting that they had been pressured to do so by sheer public demand. So when we talk so about, I'm curious about yeah. like how this information because you're saying like that there were like viral posts that got the word out very quickly. Mm-hmm. Were they just posts from regular people that were taking off? Were there like groups that were posting? Like how was it's this information? So okay. here's the way we're going to talk about this more. But you have at the top of the list, you have actual scientific studies, right? Which right. We're going to analyze a little bit, some of which are sketchy, some of which are real, some of which show a potential benefit. Those filter down to the FLCCC and some a couple other similar groups who are made up of doctors and start advising people to take ivermectin. That filters down to 
influencers to people, media figures and whatnot, who start advising people to take it. And that filters down to like Facebook groups and shit where people start spreading memes oh, and whatnot. Basest, and t- the yeah. basest area of the human psyche yeah. hidden Facebook groups. Okay, got and, it. and that's how you get from the FLCCC saying doctors should consider prescribing this to I'm going to buy horse paste and give it to my children. So, um, so it's just like the most sinister game of telephone ever played. Yes. And it is, I I do want to note, as we, as everybody continues laughing at the the fucking stupid ass Americans who could easily get a free vaccine and take fucking horse paste, most of the people taking this stuff en masse have no options and are incredibly poor and live in the periphery, in in countries where, what else are they going to fucking do? Doctors are telling them there are a lot of doctors. And again, they're very shady doctors, usually working off of very bad scientists, but they're fucking doctors. And they're telling these people this could help your family and they can't get a fucking vaccine. They have no options. Right. Like, what are they? You're not dumb if you're in the Philippines, if you're in Latin America, South America. And you're like, this is what else am I going to fucking do? You know? Uh, Right. If it's the only option, there's there's it's so urgent that there's Mm -hmm. no I mean, there's no time to get. That's uh, that's what is like sticking out to be here is like mm-hmm. especially frustrating is there are very few options and like no time to get better information. So and it is, it, like yeah. you're saying, what are you going to do? And it's, it's also important to note that a lot of these people and a lot of these communities and their communities, I grew up in a community not like, not unlike this in the U S there's a decent chunk of, of veterinary medicines that work just as well on people and are cheaper and more available. And sometimes poor people do that because again, <laughs> what the fuck else do you want me to do? Like, my kid is sick. Um, And it doesn't, like, it's not always a bad idea. Like, it's never the thing that doctors are recommend, but fucking people do it, and there's things that it can work on. Because, like, what else are you going to fucking do? Yeah, Um, right. There's different, anyway. I'm not advising you to go buy veterinary medicine for your family. I'm saying people have done it for a long time, and it's not always a bad idea. And that's part of why people are like, well, sure. You know, I've taken, like, I had to give my kids some fucking antibiotics or whatever, like, that I got from a, a, you know, like or, or, or ivermectin because he got a fucking because uh, uh, he got a fucking parasite and I gave him, you know, a small dose of horse paste because I couldn't afford to go to a doctor and get it prescribed. I'm sure a number of these people like, again, these are not dumb people. I, I just really want to because so much of the discourse around this is like making fun of the idiots in America who do it. And a lot of them are very dumb and fuck a lot of those people because they could be getting a vaccine. Um, right. But like most of these people just don't have an option. Right, which like trickles down in so many different ways yeah. of like how broken the healthcare system is. Absolutely. Of, like, this, that wouldn't even be a necessity. You wouldn't need to mm-hmm. make that judgment call if, if there were actual, you know, more viable options made available. But you know <sighs> what viable options everyone has, Jamie? What to engage with some light product and services? Oh, some light or some heavy, you know, you can, some, you can stick, you can just kind of go business. just the tip of the products and services, or you can go all the way in. That's your business, you wow. know? Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't judge. We don't ask questions. We just, we just sell people products and occasionally services. Wonder products, wonder services. Yeah. Wonder products and wonder services. All right. Here's an ad. Oh, we're back. And boy, I don't know about you, but all of my depression thinking about the desperation that would lead people in cash poor nations to self-medicate because uh, wealthy nations have hoarded the vaccine in many cases for profit. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. I was trying to make a products and services joke, but now I'm just sad again. How are you doing, Jamie? Yeah. You know, uh, talking about pharmaceuticals under uh, capitalism, I, I, I'm flying high. I feel incredible. I don't have a problem in the world. Everything is perfect and great. Yeah. I want to die. I mean, I don't know. We're what? We're a half hour into the episode. I absolutely want to, you know, just walk into traffic. Robert, is that what you want to mm-hmm. hear? Because that's where I'm always at at this point mm-hmm. in the episode. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. That's just so, where we're at. Jamie, you like science? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm like nothing science. against science. I got nothing yeah. against science. I don't, mm-hmm. what, do I have a brain for it? No. Does it make sense to me? No. No, of course not. Am Nobody. I glad people do it? 100%. Also, no. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is my way I of saying know. I we, hate science. We're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, fucking, uh, one of the problems that science has, which is so the basic idea behind, you know, doing science is, is you, you conduct studies to test hypotheses and you publish those results. And generally you, you do small studies at first to kind of see if, uh, if there's anything further to investigate or in, you know, those small studies, if, if they're promising kind of lead to larger studies and eventually you build a body of evidence that leads you to one conclusion or another, right? That's the, the broad idea that's, of how to science. That's the kind of science you learn in when you're in first grade. Yeah. The that's problem the flow with chart. that is that all that shit gets published. And oftentimes it means that these tiny studies are getting published and then people just assume, well, that's a study and it says this is good, so I'm going to do it. And then whole As industries crop up finished. around that while scientists are still trying to figure out if it works. And then another shady thing about it is that there's places that let you publish studies before the studies have been peer reviewed, which has some benefits. I've, I've found some writing as to people say why that can be useful. Um, but it also means that shady people who build themselves as scientists can put up a study that isn't really a study and hasn't been peer reviewed and has massive flaws and make it look like there's evidence supporting something when in fact there was not. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So right. Peru was, as, as far as I found, I think the first nation to include ivermectin in its national coronavirus treatment guidelines. This was based on findings in a preprint of a study by health analytics company Surgisphere. And again, a preprint, not yet peer reviewed. So they're they're sticking their rough okay. draft See, up, right? You know? But if these are publicly I do think that it's like that is like a a an ethics thing. Like it, no one knows what preprint means. So it's like you have to make I, I, I wish that that was made clearer to ugh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. It's really like I understand that if you're a scientist, you know what a preprint means and you know that this cannot be taken at face value. This is preliminary shit. Uh, but I feel like you need to make that as readily apparent to the uh, the layman as possible. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's uh, so let's talk about that surge of fear study. So, OK. Before we talk about that, I do I want to talk about Surgisphere a little bit because they've been involved in a controversy over the last medicine that wasn't really a medicine that went viral over COVID-19, which of course is hydroxychloroquine. Now, if you've forgotten, hydroxychloroquine was a medicine that doctors briefly thought, based on some early studies, might have efficacy in treating COVID-19. Those early studies, while they were still trying to figure out if it actually did have efficacy, were turned into a magical cure-all because Trump started tweeting about them. He was desperate to open the country back up and to get the economy back on track in time for the election. Several people died trying to treat themselves with hydroxychloroquine or drugs they thought were hydroxychloroquine. All the controversy over this drug obscured the fact that serious scientists were actually trying to understand if it might be useful for COVID. In mid-May 2020, The Lancet published an article suggesting that it was dangerous for patients with COVID to take hydroxychloroquine. This study was almost immediately retracted because the authors were unable to independently verify their data set, which had come from a large proprietary collection of electronic health records analyzed by Surgisphere. So Surgisphere had put together these health records that they were using to make claims that hydroxychloroquine was dangerous for certain patients. But when they attempted to verify the data set, Surgisphere said, we can't show you the health records. We can't actually show you the records themselves, which led okay. to the study being so, retracted because they can't verify it. Yeah. Now, it might not seem like a problem because, again, as we now know, hydroxychloroquine is not helpful in treating COVID-19. So the fact sure, that, I mean, which is like luck of the draw, but that's so oh, that's so it's not even bizarre luck of the draw. They even get that far into publishing something because with, they're like, oh, I don't know what the, you the want. Problem to is, it, it's not even really luck of the draw because that thing doesn't seem to have been true. Um, and when the study got retracted, that just fueled paranoia that there was a conspiracy to trick people out of taking hydroxychloroquine. The next sure. month, June, another paper was retracted, this time from the New England Journal of Medicine, due to unverifiable data from Surgisphere. That study had found that a variety of heart, me of heart medications had no safety concerns when administered to COVID patients. The fact that these papers were being retracted after many doctors had taken action based on their findings was disastrous in the midst of an already chaotic time. I encourage an 
Australian bioethicist called it catastrophic. Quote, it is problematic for the journals involved. It is problematic for the integrity of science. It is problematic for medicine, and it is problematic for the notion of clinical trials and evidence generation. This write-up from Nature explains exactly why Surgisphere's data was problematic. Quote, both papers relied on propri proprietary data analyzed from electronic health records that were apparently gathered from hundreds of hospitals around the world by Surgisphere. But after critics raised questions about the studies, the firm did not make its raw data available to third-party auditors for validation. According to the retraction notice in The Lancet, Surgisphere was concerned that transferring the data would violate client agreements and confidentiality requirements. Since we do not have the ability to verify the primary data or primary data source, I no longer have confidence in the, in the origination or, and veracity of the data, nor the findings they have led to, said Mandeep Mehra, a cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, who was the lead author on both studies. So this is, uh, and again, w with Surgisphere, there's something going on here, and I, I don't know what it is with these guys. Right, um, it's, it's, do you have any inkling of, uh, it, it just sounds like the sort of thing where it's like, what? What is the end game for yeah. doing that? I it may be as simple as they're just kind of a shady company um, who's yeah. not very good at a who, who is trying like that they're they were trying to like make a quick buck providing these records to research scientists, but um, okay. Had, weren't actually able to uh, give the scientists as much information as they would need to be able to use that kind of stuff. Um, it just seems deeply short-sighted. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that sounds very bizarre. Yeah, and it's it's a bunch of shit like that, and it's coming in like you're getting like one of the problems with this is that um, they uh, they approve a study like or sorry they so the the when the hydroxychloroquine article comes out saying that it's dangerous to give to certain patients, they stop a bunch of studies to trying to determine whether or not hydroxychloroquine works. And then they have to restart those studies later after it's retracted, which slows down the period of time after which we get concrete evidence that it doesn't work. So again, even though like it might not seem like that's a bad thing, it actually slows down the process of figuring out that hydroxychloroquine doesn't work. It's all part of this problem. Um, that... Yeah, that yeah. makes total sense. God, I'm so I'm so naive in these areas, and I'm like, wait, that mm -hmm. would fuck things up. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm it's up just, to date. It's just bad. Now, one of the co-authors of both retracted studies was a guy named Sapan Desai, and he's the founder of Surgisphere. So he's founds the company and is also one of the authors of both of the studies that get retracted. Um, and while his co-authors kind of all come out and say, hey, we're, we, we no longer stand by these studies because of issues with the data, he's notably quiet for the most part. I think he agrees to retract one of them and not the other. Now, in 2001 or 2021, Sapan Desai was the co-author of another study using data from his company, Surgisphere, which claimed to find a large reduction in COVID mortality when patients were given ivermectin. It was first published ah. to the Social Sciences preprint server SSRN on April 6th, and a second version was posted on April 19th. And this is what caused Peru to add ivermectin to their national standards of care. So this guy, whose record couldn't be shadier vis-a-vis -vis COVID-19 right. studies, puts out another preprint, so not peer-reviewed, not a finished thing, on a server because it immediately shows like, look, COVID uh, ivermectin reduces COVID-19 deaths and whole no, nations okay. start taking action based on this. Now that is so, can't they like, I'm yep. trying, I'm like trying to think, can't they just put his credibility on? I mean, he doesn't have any credibility obviously, but just like, can, how can you continue to publish preprints when your track record is that horrific? Like mm -hmm. how, how, Yep. That's uh, wild. Fuck. Okay. So so that preprint comes out and that that is what ha like results in ivermectin taking off. Yeah, that's what results in it taking off in Latin America. The FLCCC Got I think it. has okay. much more of a job of it take. But this this feeds into that too because it's one of the studies that okay. they're citing. 
So okay. one of that study's authors, again, Sapan Desai has co-authors on these studies who are more credible people. And one of the study's co-authors pulls it from the preprint server um, because, as he told Nature, he did not feel it was ready for peer review. So it does get pulled, but the damage is done by that point. He's already convinced the Peruvian government to add it to their official, like, COVID protocol, and Bolivia followed soon after. Now, when the study was— that seems was... like the pattern with, these, mm-hmm. with this, right? Yep. It's just like you put something out, you say, oh, sorry, yep. never mind, that information's terrible, but it's too late because the information has already had consequence. It, there, there's ah, a degree, okay. again, when you look at like the way the disinformation spreads, it's a lot like how COVID spreads. Like you, you have, they're both, they're both spreading. It's like a person fucks up and walks into a room without a mask on, not realizing he's been exposed. And he might realize an hour later, but by that point, he's already passed it on to four people who then all go to the grocery store, whatever. Like it's, it's the same way with disinformation. It, it spreads like a fucking right. virus. And, it, and it's like just to, yeah. So it just takes like one bad actor intentionally mm-hmm. doing it to mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. This is and it's, so I think it's often a mix of bad actors and people who are acting in good faith, but aren't quite careful enough. Um, now, so the good news is that uh, Peru removes ivermectin from their treatment guidelines as soon as the study gets pulled. But by that point, other South American nations have started using it and they don't all stop. And again, even outside of that, regardless of what the state health authorities are saying, people are now taking it in mass, right? So back in January of 2021, the NIH, the National Institutes of Health in the United States, had changed its guidance on ivermectin for the COVID treatment from against to neither for nor against. So there's enough Uh, data by January of 2021. They say we're not against this anymore. We're hedging our it's complicated. Yeah, exactly. It's complicated with ivermectin. Okay, got it. Now, in a reasonable world, this would not have counted as a positive endorsement, but we don't live in a reasonable world. The NIH made this change after Dr. Corey from the FLCCC and WHO consultant Dr. Andrew Hill presented data to the NIH Treatments Guidelines Panel. That same month, Dr. Corey released a study with the FLCCC co-founders and several other doctors that they believed would convince the CDC and FDA to approve ivermectin for use against covid Now, by this point, Dr. Corey had become convinced that ivermectin was a bona fide wonder drug, as he'd told the Senate. But the people he asked to publish his study, the study that he thought was going to convince the FDA to approve it for COVID, were less convinced. Frontiers is an open access platform for peer-reviewed science journalism, and they investigated the integrity of the study and announced on March 2nd that they were rejecting the article for, quote, a series of strong, unsupported claims based on studies with insufficient statistical significance, and at times, without the use of control groups. Oh my god, this guy's gonna have to start publishing in, like, Highlights magazine. This is so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a scientist, Jamie. I'm, in fact, legally the opposite. Um, Yeah. But I know that control groups are important. (laughs) If you want to know if a thing does something, you need a group of people who aren't doing the thing. You need to do that for M. Night Shyamalan movies before mm -hmm. they can come out, much less fucking pharmaceutical. Like, that's nuts. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So by this point, vaccines were increasingly available en masse around the United States. In December, it had made sense that ivermectin had been on the FLCCC's protocol because kind of a desperate time. But by March, ivermectin is still part of their protocol, but none of the vaccines had been added to their recommended preventative protocol. So this is the point where they're very clearly doing something shady. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fucking December. People can't get vaccines. There's evidence ivermectin might help. It's debatable whether or not it's responsible yeah, like, to put it on to there. Be clear, but like, it's still completely it's de- still debatable, debatable. But there's there's an it argument makes to be more made. sense to make to attempt to make that argument. Yeah. pre vaccine by March, okay, yes. motherfuckers are walking into their CVS and getting vaccinated, and they still haven't added that to their protocol. But the horse pace. I mean, again, they're not telling people to take the horse pace; they're telling people to get it prescribed. But whatever, I'm going to call it horse pace sometimes. So, yeah. Dr. Corey also grew more compact combative from this point forward, telling the Huffington Post, quote, when I came out and told the world that corticosteroids were critical to save lives, I got crushed for that until the recovery trial came out and it became the standard of care worldwide overnight, which is true that corticosteroids, that use was criticized and they wound up being helpful, but also wasn't your idea, Brohim. Quick Yeah, like what you, is that actually his voice or is that just, you just made him Ben Shapiro? 
Everyone's Ben Shapiro, Sophie. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, like, what is that? I was like, do you just want him to sound like a dork? And then I found out that was your Ben yeah. Shapiro voice. Yeah. Okay, that all tracks. That, that's yeah. just a flow You're chart. You're probably right. <laughs> yeah. If I God. hate him, they're Ben Shapiro. That's the way it works. Again, I'm just like, what is the end game? There's no for- end game, Jamie. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, it's, it's just money. Joker shit. I hate it. It is Joker shit. It is Joker shit. It's it's, and you know what's Joaquin Phoenix got to say about any of this? That's what I want to know, Jamie. I don't know. He's like five six. I can't hear yeah. him. Oh, okay. So I, I forgot you're a you're a you're a, a height chauvinist. So <laughs> the other thing about corticosteroids. Well, he's right that people were like, I don't think this is a good idea, and were proven wrong when the FLCCC embraced corticosteroids, corticosteroids were also very quickly shown via extremely reputable studies to be useful in COVID treatments, right? Um, It, 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 actual science backed it up and the same unequivocal evidence did not come out for ivermectin. Well, we start to get some data, right? Yeah. At this point. Yeah. And, and so we have not, especially by March, again, it's still a mix of small studies that shows not all of which suggests that it works, some of which are shady. Whereas Mm -hmm. by March, there's fucking excellent data that the vaccines are very effective. Um, So it's not the same thing. You know, it it just isn't. He's trying to he's trying to make that that claim because the it's it's his organization's claim to fame, but like, it's not the same situation. There were quickly studies that backed up the corticosteroids thing. There aren't, isn't the same body of evidence for ivermectin. And there's a lot of evidence for vaccines and you're not telling people to take vaccines. Yeah. It's fucked up. Uh, Yeah, this is absolutely fucked up. Mm -hmm. So when he was asked why he's not telling people to get vaccinated, Dr. Pierre Corey said, most of what we feel, and especially me, is that the data on vaccines is moving so fast and it's non-transparent. I just really don't know what to say about these vaccines. I just don't feel comfortable with the kind of data that we're getting. Which again, the big ivermectin he's study He's like, I cannot be point, more specific them, about this at this yeah. time. Yeah, That's he's so like, fucking the data is not transparent enough. Well, what about the fucking Surgisphere study showing ivermectin is useful that right. I'm like, had to get pulled because talking. they wouldn't give anyone access to the fucking medical data. Anyway, <laughs> in February of 2021, YouTube pulled two videos from the December 8th Senate hearing where Dr. Corey called it a wonder drug. Specifically, they pulled the portions discussing ivermectin, and this included part of Dr. Corey's testimony. Ron Johnson, a Republican senator from Wisconsin, immediately took to the pages of the Wall Street Journal to author an op-ed titled, YouTube Cancels the U.S. Senate. God, every wow. word of that sentence is the biggest loser mm-hmm. shit I've ever heard in my mm-hmm. life. Absolute virgin stuff, right? Jesus, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, quote, and this is from Ron Johnson. Dr. Corey is part of a world-renowned group of physicians who developed a groundbreaking use of corticosteroids to treat hospitalized COVID patients. His testimony at a May Senate hearing helped doctors rethink treatment protocols and saved lives. At the December hearing, he presented evidence regarding the use of ivermectin, a cheap and widely available drug that treats tropical diseases caused by parasites for prevention and early treatment of COVID-19. He described a just-published study from Argentina in which about 800 healthcare workers received ivermectin and 400 didn't. None of the 800 contracted contracted COVID-19. 58% of the 400 did. So Makes here's the thing think. about that. Here's the thing about Makes that. Makes you think. What? Ron Johnson yeah. said it. You're telling me there's going to be holes in this? This is the one that like just today, they, there's a great BuzzFeed okay. News article about that Argentinian study, um, which huh. is super inconsistent. One of the problems with it is that depending on like where you read like what part of the study you read, it gives you different numbers of how many people were actually part of the test group and control group. Um, okay. Like it's 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 just not a well conducted study, and there's actually debate. As, there's actually a serious question as to whether or not the study was conducted at all. Um, so, oh, one sec. I'm, wow. yeah, I'm, again, this just came out, so I'm going to scroll down to to the relevant point here. Um, yeah. 
Meanwhile, the clinical trial database stated, stated there were 229 participants, but other things didn't add up. It said the control group had 72 women and 26 men, even though the paper said 51 women and 48 men. The ages also seemed mathematically improbable. The paper states that nearly 70% of participants taking the therapy were under age 40. Despite this, the clinical trial website states that the median age, the age at the midpoint of the group, was 42. Those might have been errors, Carvalho conceded in the interview, which was, which is one of the study authors, which was largely conducted Those are in English. Large errors. Okay, we are yeah. not a statistical people, he said. We are not statistical <laughs> people, he said. Which is like, if you're doing a study, you, you should be. Someone in the study should be a statistical person because you're <laughs> using statistics to try to show that a medicine works. Um, yeah, this is, it's. Uh, wow. Okay. Okay. So this is just a fucking disaster. Yeah, and they're doing such a terrible job at like even PR cleanup is just like nonsense. It's just yeah. words. Yeah, and it's the journal charges. Uh, like they, the BuzzFeed found that the journal, which is a very new journal, um, charged two thousand dollars almost to publish the article. Um, and then after BuzzFeed asked about the fee, they dropped the price on their website. Um, Carvalho <laughs> admitted the st study author admitted that local drug makers had covered the expense of publishing the study and that he and his colleagues had paid the rest out of pocket. Um, there's so a bunch fucked. that's weird here. Um, and it's, it's what been, isn't weird. <laughs> yeah, so there's, it's, we're going to talk about a lot of other, uh, uh, sketchy shit. And one of the problems okay. is that like at least one of the hospitals where the study was supposedly conducted denies that it was conducted there. Um, so there's a lot that's wrong uh, with this study. They're, like okay, that, so, this study that Ron Johnson, so, again, is what Dr. Corey cited in the Senate and was what Ron Johnson points out as like, look what he's being canceled for sharing science. Well, cancel culture really science. is toxic, especially mm -hmm. with that. I mean, it's like the, that truly wasn't even something that would have occurred to me that the study didn't even happen. Like they couldn't be bothered mm -hmm. to create a fake fucking well, study. It's not the only time that, and it seems more likely that like there were some places where they did a study and did it kind of poorly. Um, because like also large parts of it, like the control group stuff was taken on the honor system. Um, yeah, so you shouldn't yeah. do that with science. It's, it's, a, there, it's a bad this is study. A, this is, this is the most opposite in terms of stakes comparison, mm. but yeah. I've been deep in hot dog culture for the last couple of months. And there was a study that was released last week saying that every time you eat a hot dog, you lose 36 minutes of your one human life, which is mm -hmm. such a wild and bizarre claim to make. And if you bear it out, it's very like anyone can publish a study and it's, and I, I feel like any time, and obviously it's like ivermectin is kind of that at the highest level and the highest stakes possible. But whenever something gets published, it's just like people are going off of the headline of like, well, if a study says it, it must be true. And there's very little, uh, well, who is conducting the study? What are their qualifications? Do they uh, have any reason to have ill intent or whatever? Like, <sighs> All that to say, this study is bullshit, and I firmly believe the hot dog 36 minutes study is bullshit. I'm yeah, sick of having I mean, it presented I, to me I, as I, fact. Yeah, because clearly each hot dog takes 90 minutes off of your life. Um, if that were true, Robert, I would be rocketing backwards in time right now. I would mm -hmm. be in 17 something. I would be wearing <laughs> fucking 500 petticoats. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Well. I don't know where I would be. I would not be. I would not be alive, and I would be transcending dimensions in time uh it's just i just feel like it's demonstrably untrue also being happy makes you live longer so I, at the very least it evens out debate Hot dogs make people happy well it is my potential it is my it is my stance that hot dogs do kill people and that that's not a bad thing because climate change <laughs> baby we got to reduce emissions do you like hot dogs robert i love hot dogs jamie <gasps> how what's your wait what's your what's your like what's you know, your go-to what's your okay. pref i mean my go-to like is, is literally any hot dog and i throw everything on it but the best okay. hot dog i've ever had jamie and <gasps> i guess we can argue as to whether or not it's a hot dog i was in lisbon 
and I was at this street market Ooh. and it was the bun okay. was black because it had squid ink in it. And instead of a hot dog, it was wow. an octopus tentacle. And there was like some sort of okay. weird creamy salad on it. It was incredible. It was so fucking tasty. Oh, my okay. God. It was good. So I have yeah. to tell you, Robert, and this is going to be really hard to hear. What you ate was not a hot dog. It was a piece of an octopus. <laughs> I but think it's a I'm hot really dog happy if it's for on you, a hot dog And that bun, sounds Jamie. like it was literally an amazing day for if, you. If it's However, a hot dog, that's if, if it's on a hot dog bun, it's a hot dog. I can't, you have the gall to log Jamie, on to zoom.us I am, and tell me octopus is hot dog. I hot cannot dogs. believe that you can claim to be a hot dog lover and say that it mm. is possible to discriminate about what is or isn't a hot dog based on the kind of meat involved. Uh, look, <laughs> a hot dog is a mixture of garbage. You can do it in a way Octopuses that is Octopuses are just ocean trash. In- but that's one piece of ocean trash. You need the different butts of 500 things in there. Yeah, but or it's, it's probably filled with plastic. Because of the poison guys, that we put in the oat. And then vegetarian hot dogs are made out of different break. vegetable trash. Do you wanna, so it's do you like... Wanna... Jamie I'm sorry, and I are I... going to take this debate offline. Yeah. You listen to these products and services. <laughs> give myself a nosebleed. She and I prepare to engage in a traditional, traditional n- knife fight of our people over hot dogs. I liked Red Huts in New Jersey. So there. Enjoy your products and services. We're back, and I'm livid at Jamie. Livid, but we I'm have to put sweating, our differences aside. I'm bleeding to but... talk about ivermectin, the hot dog of anti-parasitic medications. I mean, that's an accurate comparison. God, hot dogs get hot dogs get a bad enough rep, but you know, hey, I, but I, ivermectin's I getting a, an unfair rep too. It saved a lot of lives before you know this. Before, yeah, before it got co- before co- Republicans for found evil. YouTube. Yeah, we're not canceling ivermectin. <laughs> if you get we're a not. parasite, please take it. Yeah. You're if you right, go Robert, into the river and toxic. start feeling blind, take some ivermectin. <laughs> That's you know that you can't deny it. You can't deny mm. it. It's proven. Mm-hmm. River blindness is just that's going to stick with me because I just didn't know. Stay the fuck away from rivers, Jamie. It's like Look, all those I've people in Philadelphia so far <laughs> jumping in the flooded streets. It's like I've walked down the street in Philadelphia. I've smelled the sewers. You should not be in that water, guys. You really should not. Oh, God. Yeah. The the subways in New York. It's just mm-hmm. wow. To to be alive at the end of the world. It's it, it's amazing. It's no fun. It looked mm-hmm. way more fun in movies. Yeah, because it in seems movies, like you were going to fall deeply in love and then the world was going to end. It turns yeah. out that's not how it goes. And also in the movies, every single person doesn't have a UTI. But it turns out when the world falls apart, <gasps> everybody starts getting UTIs. <laughs> I got a UTI on Splash Mountain once. That was my that sounds worst right. UTI. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I'm surprised like that you don't Mountain hear about that you. more. Every time I tell the anecdote, people, people are, are like, embarrassed to talk about is, it. Uh, People should talk about their UTIs. They're very uncomfortable. And I feel like mm-hmm. if I knew, I've had, have you ever had a conversation with someone and after they're like, I had a UTI when we hung out that day and that's why I was being very bizarre in my behavior. I feel like you should, you, we should just normalize telling each other we have UTIs. So then if you're being a a, a, a weird hang, there's context. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We could get like a necklace of some sort or a bracelet. So Jamie, yeah, it's like a swingers party. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, 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 Johnson talking about this Argentinian study is is full of shit and an idiot. Um, and, Absolutely. And fuck yes. him. Um, and fuck him. Uh, I should also note that even okay. even based on the inaccurate. Uh, like even ba- like the study itself is bad, but even based on what the study said, he got it wrong. Like the study claims to have had, uh, he claims that the study had 800 participants. It had 300, um, which means that even based on his own claims, he got the study wrong by a third. Um, well, he already thirds, said he's not like, I mean, look, these guys aren't stats guys. There's yeah. there's science guys and science famously yeah. doesn't involve numbers or accuracy. So, 
I should also note that there was a follow-up study in Argentina released in July of 2021 that showed, quote, no significant effect on preventing the hospitalization of patients with COVID-19. That goes against the claims of a prophylactic effect. So, so and this, this is gets like us, how many... Yeah demonstrative evidence against this at this point? Like, it's been multiple Oh, we haven't even gotten into the worst one. Um, Oh, boy. But again, it's all part of this same problem where it is not bad, and it is fact, in fact, a necessary part of medical science to do a series of small studies into whether something might work before you do larger studies that are more robust. The problem with that is idiots and grifters who will take this study on 30 people that may one day be useful at eventually arriving at a treatment and instead say, start buying up all of this shit that you can and take it. And if anyone tells you not to, it's not because the science isn't ready yet. It's because they're trying to stop you from taking control of your own health and they don't want you to, yeah, they want to put a microchip a in your body. And, your, uh, yeah, it's a threat to your independence. Yeah, if you're it's a, a threat to your thinker, independence. Listen it. to me about your health care. I did MMA. <laughs> I hate if it. anyone who did MMA, ugh. Okay, there's certain fine. things I will listen to people who did MMA about. Like, for example, MMA. If Joe Rogan, if I have a problem <laughs> getting someone in a headlock and Joe Rogan offers me advice, I will take that advice. Motherfucker's pretty good at that. I'm not going to take Joe Rogan's advice about whether or not vaccines are legitimate. <laughs> well, look, I'll, I'll, I'll meet you. I'll meet you there. If, if I needed to learn how to look sweatier than anyone's ever looked in a fully air conditioned room, I would ask Joe Rogan because that, Again, he is, he has he's done the expertise. Gladwell hours for that. He's it's done just, it for over 10,000 hours. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the best at looking sweaty in a small room. He's incredible at it. A virtuoso. And you know he's got the money. It's a. Mm-hmm. It's there's. It's a air condition your thing, man. Like what? Are, what is wrong with you anyway? Whatever. I I believe that because the the in in it's the few episodes that first of all it's performance art. No, it's but the the guest is never sweaty. I think that he is. The room is forty two degrees and <laughs> he's, he's still just sweating, sweating, sweating because of all of the random pills he takes that Alex well, Jones yeah, gives him. His brain is under an intense amount of pressure from all of those pills. God, what a fucking. Uh. Loser. Okay, sorry. It's amazing. Continue. It's amazing that he's the most single most influential person in global media. Um, <laughs> and he looks like a stick of salami. He looks like a thumb oh. fucked a hot dog. Um, he looks like a thumb they, uh, fucked a hot dog. Again with yeah. the hot dog slander. I can't Look, they're the same shade of it. red, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, um, God. And again, one of the other problems with this. So again, one problem is that you get a bunch of small studies. People get, will pick and choose and grab studies that really may not be as as uh, because they're not super scientific literate. They may think that that study says more than it does. Another problem is that when you have a bunch of small studies, you might get. It's very common. You can have five or six small studies that are all good studies and all tell you opposite things because they're small. And when you have a small study, minor variables can throw off your results, which is part of why, again, science is an iterative process. But the way publishing works, all the studies are just getting shotgunned out into the public sphere. This is not an issue with obscure topics because researchers are the only ones looking at the data and they understand how this stuff actually works. But it's a problem with these epidemics because, again, there's all these fucking grifters out there looking for alternatives to the deep state vaccine. And then, of course, there is the other another issue, which is that not every scientist involved in the research process is acting in good faith. You have guys like Dr. Desai and Surgisphere putting out shady data for unclear reasons, but probably with some financial benefit. And then you have people who put up you studies to, to public repositories that have not been peer reviewed. And they know that most of the public won't know the difference. They'll just see that it's a study. And you have guys like Dr. Pierre Corey, who, when he was criticized for his sketchy Senate testimony, said, I still stand by it. And I think history will prove it to be true, even though it, history didn't. So by early 2021, nearly all of the studies that purported to show a benefit from ivermectin use were small. There was one hugely influential exception a November study published by Dr. Ahmed el of Binha University in Egypt. It claimed to be a randomized control study that had found early ivermectin use not only reduced transmission of COVID, but reduced mortality by as much as 90%. If true, this would have been huge, 
world-changing right. news. This would have meant that a cheap, widely available antiparasitic was as effective as the best vaccines. The mm-hmm. fact that this study was so large, again, there's like 400 people, I think, in this study, um, had impacts that rippled out far and wide because most of the studies are smaller. In cases like ivermectin, when researchers are analyzing a bunch of far-flung little studies to try to determine whether or not something works, they like to bunch all of those studies together and do something called a meta-analysis. To explain what a meta-analysis is, I'm going to quote from a write-up by epidemiologist Gideon Meyerowitz Katz, who again is an epidemiologist and who like analyzes scientific studies for a living uh, and is thus the kind of person you would go to for information about this, as opposed to a random pulmonologist. Anyway, quote, to solve the problem of multiple small trials, we conduct things called systematic reviews and meta-analyses. These are scientific aggregations of research that pool all of the known studies on a topic into a single place and then combine them into a statistical model so we can see what the overall effect of a drug might be. Instead of a dozen small studies, we get one big aggregated estimate, which in theory is the final word on whether or not a treatment is effective. The only problem with these analyses is that if a single study has a large enough number of participants or a huge effect, it can sway the overall trend into something positive, even though on the whole, the studies have not found a result. Now, generally, this isn't a huge issue, but it does mean that you sometimes have an entire body of literature saying that something works using the gold standard aggregation of many studies that is actually based on the results of a single piece of research. Uh. Yeah, you see how this could be a problem, huh, Jamie? This, I, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm starting to get the picture of how this shit, uh, and what is the, I mean, it's, what is the fucking solution to that? I I don't, you know, that that is the thing. The problem is very clear to me. The way that, the way that we have, the way that medical scientific studies are released and shared and that this information, like, it does not work with the way the modern information ecosystem works. Right. And that but is a problem. I, if you're looking for a solution, I'm not a scientist. I'm not your guy. I am a disinformation studier Expert, professionally, and I can tell you where the say. problem is coming in. Yeah. Right, right. The, the problem, I mean, the, the way you just laid it out, the problem is extremely clear. And, but yeah. the, the actionable solution is... Mm-hmm. And frustratingly it's, it, not at it, all it, it's a mix of things you know it's not just that this stuff gets published early and people cherry pick studies it's also this problem of like sure. some of these studies are sketchy some of these places allow you to publish things before the period like there's a number of problems but the problems are yeah. clear the solution less so so and the consequences are extremely clear yeah too and clear. the stakes are extre- are really high uh, mm-hmm. uh, okay so in June, <sighs> the first I feel like large. Is this what it feels like to yeah. have Joe Rogan's brain? It just feels like really tight, and it like it might. Uh, how sweaty are you right now, moment. Jamie? <laughs> I'm yeah. fucking. I'm fucking drenched, and I'm yep. sitting in a meat freezer, mm-hmm. so I feel like I might feel like he feels. Yeah. Now, is your best friend an incredible jujitsu expert who also believes the moon landing was fake and the Earth is flat? Because if so, you uh, might actually just be Joe Rogan. Wait a second. That would explain so much of you the do year hang out with happening. Eddie Bravo a lot. So I keep screaming to <laughs> for comedians to move to Austin and then they mm-hmm. hate it and then they leave because it's a terrible place. Anyway, um, no, so no, no. in June, the first large meta analysis of ivermectin studies was published in the American Journal of Therapeutics. It found, quote, moderate certainty evidence finds that large reductions in COVID-19 deaths are possible using ivermectin. Now, that kind of wording in a meta-analysis published in a reputable journal had huge reverberations. By the end of June, ivermectin was being discussed on our friend Joe Rogan's show in its first ever emergency episode. This was so important, he did an emergency Look, he's episode. he's just giving all thoughts a chance, Robert. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's wrong with I giving every vaccinated. thought a chance. I think now, he's vaccinated. He might be. We'll talk about Joe and uh, we'll talk shit. about Joe in part two. Right. I honestly, but in this, yeah, I know. In it's, this emergency episode, Dr. Corey sits down, Joe Rogan, Dr. Pierre Corey of the FLCCC, and Brett Weinstein, who we'll talk about in part two, but is a grifter, uh, sit down to talk about how ivermectin is a fucking wonder drug. Now, that episode dropped days after that first meta-analysis was published. I cannot overstate the influence of having that big meta-analysis like played on kind of making this look more like a thing than it really is. Weinstein claimed, quote, 
The censorship campaign obscuring ivermectin as a prophylactic against SARS-CoV-2 and as a treatment for COVID-19 kills. Is it about shareholders and EUAs? Now, this discussion merged with Rogan's own worries about vaccine passports and whether or not young, healthy people needed the vaccine. Ivermectin was now billed as a replacement to the vaccine, where six months before, Dr. Corey himself had pushed it as just a stopgap until the vaccine was ready. And for a while, that meta-analysis and Dr. Elgasar's study gave Dr. Corey and other ivermectin advocates a leg to stand on. They could point to this massive study and say, hey, why isn't the mainstream media covering this? It must be because ivermectin is a generic over-the-counter drug, and so they're not, Big Pharma's not going to make money, so they're hiding it. <laughs> now, the reality is that ivermectin was fucking everywhere. It was all over alternative media, like the Joe Rogan podcast, which has a vastly larger reach than any mainstream news network. He gets like 100 million downloads in a month. That's Reputable absurd, reporter, yeah. yeah. Like, CNN is not as fucking influential as Joe Rogan at this point. Reputable reporters were hesitant to write too favorably about ivermectin, though, because as soon as that Egyptian study dropped, there were questions about its veracity. And the study, of course, proved to be bogus, which, as we talked about earlier, throws the entire meta-analysis into question. Gideon Meyerowitz Khan, or whatever, Gideon MK is how he writes on the, I read his full name earlier, whatever, Gideon, that epidemiologist I quoted earlier. He has a yeah. hobby of analyzing bad scientific studies and pointing out why they're disreputable. He is an actual oh. scientist and an actual epidemiologist. He's not a Joe oh, Rogan. How refreshing. And unlike Dr. Corey, he specializes <laughs> in a field relevant to talking about whether or not ivermectin fucking works. In Imagine. July, he wrote a d devastating piece about Dr. Elgasar's study. A number of his tech Technical criticisms of the study are not things I understand, but this bit here should be clear to everyone. Quote, the entire introduction appears to be plagiarized. Indeed, it's very easy to confirm this. I copy-pasted a few phrases from different paragraphs into Google, and it is immediately apparent that most of the introduction has been lifted from elsewhere online without attribution or acknowledgement. So, I hope it was like the first chapter of a babysitter's club. Book. Right off the bat. <laughs> that's a problem. That's a little Good bit of a problem, Lord. right? That's a little bit of a problem. Just a, um, just a touch. But what's worse is that I the numbers yourself. in the study... <laughs> are frankly impossible, which has thrown considerable doubt again on whether or not the study was actually conducted at all. Oh, Quote, tight. In Table 4, the study shows mean, standard deviation, and ranges for recovery time in patients within the study. The issue is that with a reported range of 9 to 25 days, a mean of 18, and a standard deviation of 8, there are very few configurations of numbers that would leave you with this result. You can even calculate this yourself using this tool developed by the clever fraud detectives James Heathers, Nick Brown, Jordan Anaya, and Tim Vanderzee. To have a mean of 18 days consistent with the other values, the majority of the patients in this group would have had to stay in the hospital for either either nine or 25 days exactly. So a lot of like, when you actually do the data, weird shit. Somehow it yeah. gets even worse. It turns out that the authors uploaded the actual data they used for the study into an online repository. While the data is locked, uh, one of the like people in analyzing this managed to guess the password in the file, which was one, two, three, four, and gain an ac a no. access to the anonymous patient level information that the authors used to put the paper together. Quote, Jesus. I've got a copy, and it's amazing how obvious the flaws are even at a casual glance. For example, the study reports getting ethical approval and be uh, approval and beginning on the 8th of June, 2020. But in the data file uploaded by the authors onto the website of the preprint, fully one-third of the people who died from COVID-19 were already dead when the researchers started to recruit their patients. Unless they were getting dead people to consent to participate in the trial, that's not really possible. Moreover, about 25% of the entire group of patients who were recruited for the support supposedly prospective perspective randomized trial appear to have been hospitalized before the study even started, which is either a mind-boggling breach of ethics or a very bad sign of potential fraud. Even worse, if you look at the values for different patients, it appears that most of group, group 4 are simply clones of each other, with the same or largely similar initials, comorbidities, lymphocyte scores, etc. So... <laughs> This is the worst sci-fi premise I've ever heard in my this. life. They're like, we're recruiting ghosts. We're yeah. recruiting clones. We've we're got a lot of ghosts in the study. Oh the my big God. pharma doesn't want you to know what ghosts have to say about medicine. <laughs> so by the time... In this essay, I yeah. will. Like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. The problem That's is so by the time... so many different mistakes. Yeah. Not mistakes, but like lies. Yeah. 
it's a lot of problems. And Gideon's not the only guy breaking this down and blowing the a number of people try to, but by the time this gets thoroughly debunked, it had been downloaded 150,000 times and cited in two different meta-analyses that showed ivermectin as having a huge medical benefit. And it was the largest study in both meta-analyses. So... Again, when you've got a bunch of small studies and one big study, this one involved 400 test subjects, that large study can skew the results of a meta-analysis, which is what happened here. Quote, yeah. if you look at those large aggregate models and remove just this single study, ivermectin loses almost all of its purported benefit. Take the recent meta-analysis by Bryant et al. that has been all over the news. They found a 62% reduction in risk of death for people who were treated with ivermectin compared to controls when combining randomized trials. However, if you remove the Elgazar paper from their model and rerun it, the benefit goes from 62% to 52% and largely loses its statistical significance. There's no benefit seen whatsoever for people who have severe COVID-19 and the confidence intervals for people with mild or moderate disease become extremely wide. If you include another study that was published after the Bryant meta-analyses came out, which found no benefit for ivermectin on death, the benefits seen in the model disappear entirely. For another recent meta-analysis, simply excluding Elgazar is enough to remove the positive effect entirely. And so... In one fell swoop, the very best scientific case for ivermectin as a COVID treatment kind of collapses. Within the medical field, reaction to the work Gideon and others had done busting this bad study was swift. The preprint server that had published Dr. Elgazar's study before peer review pulled it due to ethical concerns. The meta-analyses, though, are still out there and still being cited. And that's, I guess, all we're going to talk about in part one. <laughs> Oh, good. It's, it's a I real problem, Jamie. Sick. Yeah, yeah, this is this is ex this is so troubling. I mean, yeah. And it's I, I mean, <laughs> I knew the studies were going to be it was going to be bad for sure. Yeah. But this is like a level of disinformation and negligence that I had not anticipated. Mm hmm. Wow. 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 What well, a nightmare. What a nightmare. Um, wow. Well. All right, Jamie, you got to plug things? Oh, plug, yeah, plug, I could plug, plug. things. Uh, I'll, here, here's a plug. You can listen to all of ActCast out now. Yeah. Uh, which is my podcast about the history of Kathy Comics and uh, 20th century American feminism. Uh, yet, or you could... Uh, Listen to the Bechtel cast, or you, you could uh, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. And Twitter is Jamie Left His Help. Instagram's Jamie Christ Superstar. And that's all. I think that that's all I have to say. Oh, also, also, I am still soliciting hot dog recommendations. I've been to a lot of places. I've tried. I think all the all the big dogs, all the places that are on the listicles. I've been to all of those. But if there is an obscure hot dog place that you think I should try in the continental U S because I, I cannot, <laughs> we, we can't go anywhere. Uh, let me know. I'm interested. Yeah. Oh, there's a great, there's a great, uh, uh, a hot dog place in Lisbon where you can get something that I will argue is a hot dog. Or you can get a piece of octopus on a force. hot dog bun. If it it's random delicious. meat, it's a hot dog. It's not random meat. If it's just one meat. It could be random. You could just stick your stick a <laughs> knife in the ocean. Sometimes you're going to get octopus. Random. It could be wearing a Jack Skellington sweatshirt. The, That's not I, random, Jamie. That's a <laughs> popular media phenomenon. I look. I I've I, I had a Jack Skellington hoodie before I'd ever seen that damn movie, I'm and then I watched it. Absolutely certain you did. Oh, before, and it was huh? Weird. Boring. Creepy. Yeah, no, before. Well, that's just if you want to be taken serious by the kids who play hacky sack outside, you got to have a Jack Skellington t-shirt. That's just how the social climate was at that time. Well, there's some free advice if you want children to like you. <laughs> um, in 2007. In 2007. If you're traveling back in time in 2007, and it is critical <laughs> that 14-year-olds think you're cool, Jamie Loftus mm -hmm. has... The, I have a thirty dollars solution for you. It's called the Jack Skellington hoodie. Solution for you. Thirty dollars yeah. is more money back then, though, so keep that in mind. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's a couple weeks of allowance. Mm -hmm. Well, follow us at Bastards Pod on Twitter and Instagram, or at Cool Zone Media for all the things. We'll be back Thursday. Bye. No, we won't. Bye.